We asked about the biggest issue facing Summit, and you gave us your two cents. Phil Lindemann with Crystal 93 News. First, there would be no groomers this November without the big guns. Our mountain operations team and our snowmaking team are the true heroes of opening day. Kind of the same story every year, but they're out there around the clock 24-7 ready to make snow at every opportunity that weather and conditions permit. That was Sarah Lacoco with Breckenridge Resort. The snowmaking crew has been working hard since late October to make enough snow for opening day, and that means constantly checking the wet bulb temperature. That's the magic number for snowmaking, and unlike last winter, when November was downright balmy, nighttime temps have been dropping below the wet bulb mark. What that means is it's really a ratio between humidity and temperature. So at 26 degree wet bulb, we'll start making snow. Ideal is in the mid-teens. Snowmakers at Breckenridge have blown enough snow to open all of Springmeyer with an 18-inch base tomorrow. Up next is more work on Peak 8, and then it's on to Peak 9 and the Terrain Park for Dew Tour in December. The season is short and sweet for snowmaking. Crews at Breck, Copper, and all across Summit ski areas are finished for winter by Christmas time. All this week, we've been asking you, our listeners, to give us your opinion on a hot-button topic. What's the biggest issue facing Summit County in the next 10 years? And you responded. Listener Eileen said the biggest issue by far is housing. She has lived full-time in Summit for 23 years and sees both sides of the issue. She admits that landlords don't want to pack tenants into small homes, but says it's getting harder and harder to afford rent without roommates to share the load. In the past few years, rent has gotten so expensive for the 46-year-old that she has considered moving away. What are we supposed to do, she asks. I live and work in the community, not that there is one anymore. That's your voice on Crystal 93. Tune in all next week for a new question and then give us a call at 513-9393, extension 13. Leave a message with your opinion to be featured on air next Thursday. It's your voice on Crystal 93. Jill Bryant at Friends of the Dillon Ranger District knows how important grants can be for a nonprofit. After all, she wouldn't have her job without one. We were obviously able to pay for an additional staff member, which is myself, which is great. Bryant is Youth and Education Programs Manager for the local nonprofit. Her job was created with help from the Copper Environmental Foundation grants. Since 2007, the foundation has awarded more than $230,000 to local entities, including 7000 to FDRD in 2016. It shows that they're entirely invested in their community. It's promoting for stewardship. We believe that for kids, nature-based activities are really the best way to increase their understanding of the forest. The foundation grants are supported entirely by copper employee donations, but they aren't awarded to just anyone. They're specifically for youth programs in Summit and Lake Counties. That includes Bryant's job, along with nearly a dozen programs at FDRD. In the winter, we added free half-day programs for youth. Uh, we worked with our partners, and some groups even helped us improve the winter trails by installing trail markers. Applications for this year's foundation grants opened earlier this week and close on December 31st. Awards range from $5 to $5,000 per program. To apply or learn more, email environment at coppercolorado.com. In sports, the Nuggets play the Kansas City Thunder tonight at 8.30 on TNT. And on Thursday Night Football, the Seahawks take on the Cardinals in Arizona. Kickoff is 625 on NBC. Phil Lindemann with Crystal 93 News.